Good evening. It's one of those nights. Um, this is a replay. This is a, re a restart because my other broadcast died, so I'm starting over. Um, in, not that you won't see it because it's gone now. We deleted it. So welcome to my broadcast. <laughs> this is weirding a twofer. Um, this is my broadcast. This is my daily broadcast. Welcome to my chat. This is episode number 907. And topic today is what? Um, how do you love when things go sideways? I'll explain more about that in a moment. Before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. Um, my name is Barry Selby, as you may have seen from around the broadcast. I, <laughs> I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, help you have more love, more lo more joy, and more exciting in your, excitement in your relationships. In fact, this talk's going to be tying into one of the chapters in the book, although I may not get there directly. Um, and I'm also, I also help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what informs my work. I also started these talks or inspired these talks just over, just under three years ago, close to three years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're at episode number 907. And it's an evening broadcast because I had an event earlier I was at, not an event, but an experience I was at earlier, which I'll share about too. They're kind of what started this talk and what inspired this talk. So, and by the way, this is my Facebook Live and it is later than usual. And I'll tell you at the back end when you find the replays because this is number 907. There's 906 out there before this, which I'll invite you to go look at and enjoy at some point in time. So stay to the end, I'll give you the links for that. And I'm probably gonna post some links for some offerings because I do put calls to action in my talks because that's the way this this works. So let's dive in. Hopefully the connection will stay this time because it went on the fritz just now. Um, what I mean by, um, just make sure I cover it. Yeah, I did cover it, okay. What I mean by how do you love when things are sideways is if you're in a relationship, if you are in a relationship or if you want to be in a relationship or reflect on your previous relationship, what happens in your relationship with your partner if something uncomfortable happens to the partner? Not, not their partner something to you, like they'll cheat on you, something like that, I don't mean that, but you'll go, like for example, I'll see the experience I just went through. The reason my broadcast is late today is because um, right before I was gonna go live, actually about 15 minutes before I was gonna go live, I got a call that needs to go help my friend to take it, to go with her to the uh, urgent care um, clinic. Not to the ER, but the urgent care because she was feeling some challenge, physical challenges. I'm gonna go into details, keep it private, confidential, respecting that. But the thing was, was, we were there for three and a half hours. Quite a long time. And I was in the waiting room most of the time because once we got a set up, I, I had to, you know, was leaving the space because we're not in a relationship, we're just friends. But my, what crossed my mind, and it was funny because a friend of mine who was in a, another group, um, who's doing a Facebook Live about the similar topic, triggered this thought in me, was if I was in a relationship with her, would I stay or would I be thinking I want to bail when I get out? Because I know quite a few people, I'm not gonna name any names, who when the going gets rough, they get going. And it's unfortunate to watch that when they desert their partner because something happens that is challenging. So I'm gonna leave you with that question for a moment What's to tell you a little story because I wanna get back to get back in line with the story I was gonna share earlier, which I didn't finish, so I'm gonna finish it this time. Um, if you are in that position in a relationship where either one, something happens to your partner, maybe there's a car accident, maybe there's something else where they get ill, and if you go with them to some medical facility, just to be generic, it could be emergency room, could be urgent care, something like that. But what happens to your commitment? Do you get up and run, or do, you, or do you stay invested and commit and stay with a partner through thick and thin? Now, I'm not talking about to a deathless partner, I'm not talking about the marriage side, that's another conversation for another time. I'm not talking about stuff happens in life that is gonna throw you a curveball. The second part is, what, happen, what, what happens for you, if that happened to you, how would you feel about your partner? Would you feel like you want to drive them away because you didn't feel like you deserved them? Because some people I know who do that. Would you be begging them to stay because you're worried about being alone while you're going through this challenge, this ailment, this illness? And if you're, in, if you're past a relationship, would your partner, you can reflect, would your partner stay with you? Had you gone through that? So I'm playing with that and sit with that for a moment. I'm going to tell you a little story from my own experience from about 15 years ago um, that I was with somebody who got sick. This was physically sick. Not in the ER, this just in, this just in the space we were in. So this is why it's so telling, because it, there's certainly different levels for this. So, to put it succinctly, I was dating a girl, we were only together for about, well, it ended right because of this situation, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, just leaning your seeds and planting your seeds to, to throw you curveballs. <laughs> so we, were going, we, got to, we got together, we were going out for maybe a month and a half, something like that, maybe a month, 
we had a great physical chemistry, great sex, it was wonderful. Uh, that, that, was, that was all good. But a point in time, basically what defined the end of our relationship, so I'm gonna say it was about a month in, it was a short relationship, very passionate, but very short. Um, she'd been out, I, I got to her place before she got back and she'd been out drinking and heavily and, and partying a little bit. And when she got back, she got sick. And so she's basically throwing up in the sink, actually throwing, throwing up in the, yeah, in the sink. I, I'm trying, I'm remembering the picture of it. My first instinct, which I acted on, was to go up to her and hold her hair back while she was throwing up because she was gripping the side of the sink. She didn't have her hands free to hold her hair back. And, and I thought for her own comfort and peace of mind, it'd be nice if she didn't have like, you know, vomit in her hair, just to be totally crude about it, but just to get the picture. That's what happened that night. The next day, she broke up with me. I know exactly what happened, is I got to viscerally experience how somebody is so averse to true intimacy. I said the sex was great, we had great chemistry, great passion, we had some really good times, but that wasn't true intimacy. The intimacy was being that vulnerable with each other and she wasn't up for it. In fact, she was so averse, she, she broke up with me because she was so scared by that. And I had to know that afterwards I found out some more information that qualified and clarified that. So this is the thing I'm talking about is certain things can bring down the walls so fast and so deep. You're at such a place of intimacy that sometimes it's forced. And the question is, do you run like hell or do you say, bring it on? Because this is really what relationship can be about. It's not just the nice times, the easy times, it's so convenient, it's so wonderful. I mean, a lot of people go dating, it's all they want to do, it's just have a nice time with somebody. As soon as anything shows up that's darker or negative, they'll bail. But if you're in a relationship, as in commitment, togetherness, synergy, I don't know, think about the words that come through, how committed are you through the process? In my book, as a chapter, um, when she talk about the rubber band principle. And the way I describe it, and I'm going to give you that, I'll put a link to the, in the comments for my book at the end so you can check it out for yourself. It, there's a, um, there's a, a, a conversation I talk, I talk about in the book about this idea of relationships are basically like rubber bands. And a rubber band, I don't think I have anything I can use. I'm just trying to grab a prop. <laughs> um, let me do this. I, I was impromptu. This is, this is unscripted, as you can tell. So I'm going to give you this. All right. So imagine that this, it's not, but imagine this is a rubber band. Okay. So if you're in a relationship with somebody, there's a certain amount of tension that's built into that thing because you're two unique people dancing together, playing through a life, going through the journey. That's how relationships work. The thing is that at points in time, stuff happens that changes the paradigm. For example, and basically what happens is one person will get more developed, more aware, more something, the other person won't be. There'll be different scales, different, different levels of experience. So for example, um, somebody may go to a powerful retreat, seminar, training, teaching experience that raises their vibration or raises their awareness, so to speak, but the other person hasn't done that. And what happens is by doing that, there's a great attention on that relationship. When that happens, there's one of three options that can happen, can result from that. The first thing is that the person who didn't do any work, this one down here, sees what their partner's like now and sees how much more alive, awake, aware, conscious, caring, compassionate they are and go, I want some of that. And they'll go do the same seminars and it brings the relationship back into homeostasis, at balance. It's a tension, but it's not, not extreme, it's just, it's just there. That's the ideal option. The second option is, Again, the person's down here, not moving, the person who's gone and done, done their work, and realizes that the love they have for their partner supersedes their own personal journey. So what they do is they'll basically start to slowly back down to where the level was with their partner. Again, no tension, and so they're now back in that relationship, homeostasis. The third option is the other one that happens. So again, person grows, develops, does some new work, transforms their life, new experiences. It could be a book they read, it could be a training they went to, a retreat, something like that. The other person doesn't want to go there. And the person who's grown realizes there's no other choice. They have to let go and move on. And that's the rubber band idea. And so it's, again, it's one of the chapters in my book. It talks about the rubber band experience. But the thing is, this also applies to trauma and challenge on another level. So 
same same scenario. Two could be in a relationship. There's a, ten, there's a slight tension in the relationship. One person go is in is in a car accident, gets taken to hospital, and it's hit and miss for a few days. What happens to the other person? Do they stay, or do they run? This is a question I'm going to have you ask yourself because I don't have the answer for you for this, but I have some suggestions. If you're in a relationship, why? <laughs> That's an easy question to play with, isn't it? What I mean, though, is if you're in a relationship, what is it you really want from that relationship? Are you in it full on, both feet in, committed, bring it on all the way, no matter what happens? Or are you only in it for the nice times, where everything's okay and it's all fine and then I was gonna bail? Because as my, as my friend Steve, this is the one I watched the broadcast earlier that was on a similar theme, talks about it's like, you know, if, you get, if your partner gets laid off from their job, do you take care of them? If you're the woman and it's a man who gets laid off from his job, do you take care of them? Do you stay with them? Do you stick it out? Or do you decide I can't, you know, I want someone else who's got money? Because people do that. Maybe you don't, but some people do. On another level, so this illness is one option, so physical health is one, money is another one. Now, I'm not speaking about the stuff that, they, that your partner may choose to do, like go sleep with somebody else or something else that violates your reach, relationship agreements. That's a different story because that's a conscious, intentional violation of the trust you have. If you have a, poly, a green, a red flag about, the, sorry, a green flag for monogamy, a red flag for polyamory, kind of sort of. And if your, past, your partner doesn't stay monogamous with you, well, that's breaking the agreement you have. That's different. But there's, the situation is, if things happen to your partner, and I don't mean like a victim, but stuff happens, life happens. You get laid off from a job, or you get transferred out of town to another job in a different, different city. How do you deal with that? What is your opportunity? What's your experience? What's your choice in that relationship? Because for me, it's a it makes relationships much more. Um, I'm going to put this in a simple way. <laughs> Sometimes I want to phrase this. Basically, it puts relationship into a new level of experience and a new level of intimacy, a new level of connection. As I mentioned earlier about my, my experience in that relationship. She was scared of that much intimacy, and she bailed. As you can, as I, from you said, I said in the story about how I went and held her hair back, I was full on, fully in. Let's do this. Not, not to say I was there looking forward to it, but as soon as it happened, I just, I just responded without thinking about it. I'm like, I'm in the relationship to see where it goes, and she gets sick, we'll take care of it. Now, I know many people can't even do that. So my question to you, which I said at the beginning, the title is is how do you love when things are sideways? What is your choice? What is your preference? What is your list of things you would do that if that's something to your partner, you would stay for and things you would leave? Because this will tell you if you're ready for marriage for a start. <laughs> Although I know some people have been married more than four times and they're, not, they're younger than me. And I'm like, okay, they don't obviously understand what marriage is really about. But I want to give you the thought to like play with this. What is your commitment level to relationship? How committed are you to intimacy, to vulnerability, to go that deep with a partner because if you're not why are you there if you're just there for the fun and games lightheartedness great but make sure your partner knows that so you don't waste their time because they may be in it for the whole, whole call again that thing about the different le different levels in relationship maybe they're in it full on because they want to stay the whole time and you're you're just flying by night going you know what it's nice now but i'm leaving if it goes bad this is the choice about relationships how deep are you willing to play how committed are you to your relationship and are you willing to be full on, full in, and fully engaged? I'm not going to tell you what the answer is. That's up to you. But I will put some links in the comments as I mentioned, because I did mention my book and a chapter from it. My book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, that's one of the chapters in the book. There's 49 other ones, obviously. I'll put a link in the comments for my book so you can get a copy yourself. Thank you, Carrie. Nice to see you, my friend. Um, that's one thing. Secondly, um, well, if you're, if you're stuck in the area of a relationship, you're not sure how to find your way through to get what you want and you're feeling like they'll never find the one you really want, I'll also put a link in the comments so you can reach out for a chat with me. So it'll be that. And um, no, I'm going to put the full, I'm going to put the other two in there as well. <laughs> I was thinking about what I was going to put in the comments. So I'm going to put some links in the comments for you. So my book will be in the comments. A reach out for conversation from, with a chat for me. It's a complimentary chat for you to have with me. We're going to give you some guidance, some steps, some clarity and where you can look forward to moving into your life with healthy relationships. 
So, and that also to find out if we want to work together. That's another thing that's on the table. That's two, three. I'm going to put in the comments um, for the ladies my online program, my signature program called Attract the Man You Want. Because if you're single and you're in a relationship that includes the willingness to go this deep, put that on your list. My Attract the Man You Want program will help you create that list in a whole new paradigm as a powerful intentional creation of vision, in, of vision, embodiment, and magnetism. Yeah, it's pretty special. It's pretty spooky too. Um, so that's my online course. That's called that's my signature program called Attract the Man You Want. That'll be in the comments too. And finally, I put in the comments my self love meditation because frankly, we could all use more love. If you're not practicing self love first, you may forget how to love yourself before you meet somebody else. Maybe, but I'll put the link in the comments to my guided self love meditation. It's two audio meditations, an AM and a PM meditation. It'll guide you through step by step how to love yourself more and set up your day and end your day the right way with a little, with a rather interesting workbook as well. And um, that's about it. So those four things in the comments. Oh, my replays. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I usually go live at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I do go every, live every day, but it's usually 5 p.m. Pacific time, but I've been busy with other things. Yesterday I was out late, didn't get back. Today I had to deal with the urgent care situation, so it's going live now. Um, I should be able to go live at 5 p.m. Pacific time most days this week. Thanksgiving, I know it's gonna be an off day because it's I've got feasting to do, so I may go earlier. But I do this every day. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can find me on my personal page at facebook.com slash Barry Selby on my personal page. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And Facebook doesn't have a habit of saving all of them, but they're out there somewhere. But you can go look at the last two or 300 if you want to watch them through there. I do recommend that watching my YouTube channel, because my YouTube channel was where they all get saved and you can scan through the titles and much easier to search through because they're just the videos, because my personal page and business page have other stuff on there besides my Facebook Lives. So my YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. You can scan through the titles, keyword search, all that sort of stuff, find the ones you want to talk, look, find the ones you want to watch and learn from. 900 and, well, this one, 906, 907. Um, these are my mission to serve, to inspire and to awaken. If you watch these, you'll get value, my, my belief is, and if you want to get help, you can reach out to me. Again, four links will be in the comments for you to check out after I sign off. And as always, please take care of yourself, and I'll see you again tomorrow.